you can use autograph to illustrate graph transformations and the value of E. So I'm just going to load up autograph. I'm going to load up my standard page, the page that I've saved so that it always looks very nicely for me. And I'm going to enter an equation. I'm going to put in the equation y equals x squared. So this one this is going to be my, my base equation. So I'm going to make this dotted. So I can just keep this here and then think about how my changed equation, my transformed equation, looks relative to this one. So here is the graph of y equals x squared. It's going to move the page down because we don't really need that, that bottom section for what I'm about to do here. I'm going to um, enter my next equation. This is going to be y equals x squared. I'm going to put in plus a on the end there. And we can then investigate what happens as we manipulate that value of that value of a. So maybe this is a question of the students that the computer must think that the value of a is one. Um, so I'm going to get my constant controller box up and I'm going to see what happens if I increase the value of a. Now I don't know if you can hear on my keyboard, but I'm actually having to hit that um, hit the mouse button ten times to increase it from one to two because we go in step to 0.1. So I'm going to increase the step value. So now I can jump up in whole numbers. And we can quite quickly work out or deduce that that value of A is translating the graph, is translating the graph upwards. So I'm going to go and change my equation now. What if I put that value of A as uh, I put it right in front of the x squared? So this time the computer thinks that A is 1. And as I increase the value of a, oh, it looks to me that the graph is being stretched horizontally. Um, is that really what we what we want students to achieve here? I was hoping that this would look like a vertical stretch. Well, what's happened? Well, I'm going to make it look like a vertical stretch. It lo looks much better or much easier to understand that if I just put a point on the curve there. So now, as I change that, we can see that actually it's a vertical stretch. So that point, that point that started off as 1, 1, then goes to 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, as it gets stretched by that scale factor. Um, we're able to, if we wanted to, we're able to do more than one thing at a time. So we could have that vertical stretch together with, and if I, if I put this inside the bracket, we could even include a horizontal translate translation as well by um, manipulating a second value. So here I've introduced the value B. So there's my value of B. As I change the value of B, we can see that as I increase B, then the graph is moving horizontally to the left by that many places. Um, what we are able to do, we can animate these. So it's quite nice to see what happens to that value of B as we animate it from perhaps minus three up to three. I'm going to do it so it moves fairly fast. And we can see it moving to the left, <clears throat> moving backwards and forwards. We can do two animations at the same time if we like. Um, so I'm going to, as well as animating the value of B, I'm also going to animate the value of A. If I'm lucky, we might get them again at the same speed, I'm not quite sure. So here we have the curve being stretched vertically and translated horizontally at the same time. Here it goes back down again. I think maybe one key thing to, to point note, note here is that as that value of A goes negative, then the graph is reflected vertically in the x-axis. So we can do graph transformations quite nicely. A particular graph transformation which is nice to do is to demonstrate the value of e. So I might start off this lesson by talking about what the graph of 2 to the x look like and we can see it there. I would probably point out that it goes through 1, 1. Uh, my next question to your students might be what does the graph of 3 to the x look like? What about 4 to the x? And then lead on to what about a to the x? We've got the original, or a great question here. Why is it a horizontal line? Because the computer thinks that the value of a is 1. Uh, I'm going to go in whole numbers again. 
So here's two to the x, three to the x, four to the x, and we can talk about what's happening to the shape of the graph as we change it. I'm then going to use another feature of Autograph to add in the gradient function of this graph. So I'm going to click on gradient function up here, and I'm going to click OK. And we can see there our mustard yellow dotted curve is the gradient of each of the points of our red curve. Now we can, I'm going to need to go in smaller steps here. Um, we could talk about how are these things related. I can see that the mustard curve is below the red curve. Is that always the case? Well, it turns out that if we increase the value of A, then the mustard curve overtakes and is above the red curve at some point. So I wonder what point that was. Um, Look to me that it could be around about 3, 2.9, 2, 2.7 perhaps. And then we can zoom in and say, do we think it's exactly 2.7? Looks that it isn't. So then we can look in finer detail. I'm going in steps of 100 this time, steps of 100 this time. So it looks to be around about 2.72. We can come back and we can go in even finer detail. So what is this value where one graph sits on top of the other one? Well, 2.718. We can go even more accurate if you like, 2.7182. And so what we've got here, if I zoom back out, and I'm going to move the graph so we can see it. Here we've got the graph then of y equals 2.7182 to the power of x, which seems to be a fairly special graph. We've discovered a graph where the differential of the equation is the equation itself. And so it turns out that this number, 2.7182, dot, 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 is a rather special number which is given the label E. Interestingly, it's the only number which has been named after a person. It's been named after Euler. Um, so this is the graph of E to the X. And so students have now discovered that if you differentiate Y equals E to the X, you do in fact get Y equals E to the X.